Hello, and welcome to the Killer Cuties podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Cassidy, and I've seen almost every horror movie out there. And I'm KD, and before we started, I'd seen almost none of them. So join us each week as I attempt to make a horror fan out of KD. As a warning, we will be discussing spoilers and some uncomfortable topics that may be in the plots, so feel free to check out the film on DoesTheDogDie.com first to check for any triggers before listening. Today, we're going to be talking about the 1990 miniseries based on the Stephen King novel of the same name, It. Let's get spooky. All right. Should I kick us off with a quick summary? Yes, please. A very quick summary for a three-hour movie. <laughs> In 1960, in the rainy town of Derry, Maine, young Georgie loses his arm to Pennywise the Dancing Clown while retrieving his paper sailboat from a storm drain. George's brother, Bill, along with friends Eddie, Ben, Beverly, Richie, Stan, and Mike, form the Losers Club and learn that Pennywise is an ancient child-hunting entity. The Losers face bullying from Henry Bowers and horrifying encounters with Pennywise. They reunite to enter Derry's sewers to confront it, it, it. In a final battle, they use their imaginations against it, injuring the creature and forcing it to flee. 30 years later, Pennywise returns, prompting Mike to call the losers back to Derry. Stan commits suicide rather than face it again. The losers, successful in their careers, reunite. They are tormented by Pennywise and hunted by Bowers, who is under the creature's influence. Bill's wife, Audra, also falls victim to Pennywise. The losers confront it in the sewers, discovering its spider-like true form. Eddie sacrifices himself to wound it, and the losers defeat the creature by destroying its heart. They rescue Audra and go their separate ways, their memories fading over time, but their bond remains. Beverly and Ben marry, Richie becomes an actor, and Bill revives Audra from her catatonic state by riding a bike. Yeah. Not just any bike, you know? Yeah, the the bike. <laughs> the bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his childhood Schwinn. <laughs> yeah. That was a really cute scene where it was Mike and Bill, right? Were yeah. riding the bike and it was like flashbacks to when they were kids. That was actually a really cute scene. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Agreed, yes. I feel like... Yeah, I don't know. They didn't really like show him enjoying his bike in like the the kid scenes did they like i feel like he was on it but they didn't like emphasize how much he loved it until well, like kinda... mike got it for him you know brought it back and then they had like the flashbacks or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. but he did do the like hi ho silver and away yeah <laughs> which is cute and silly and very 90s or i guess that was 60s yeah Filmed in the 90s, but takes place yeah. in the 60s. And boy, was it ever filmed in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, some of some of the choices <laughs> were definitely... It's a bit dated. <laughs> you, you know the biggest choices they made mm -hmm. were in hair and makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Bill's ponytail... Not yeah. it. And was it Henry's little soft serve? Like, uh, yeah, like greaser look. It wasn't greaser, though. I mean, yeah, I guess it was supposed to be greaser. Yeah. But it was more like. Who's that like? Alien kid cartoon from the 60s. Alien kid. Oh, Astro Boy. Astro Boy. That's exact. Faster. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, well, the, that at least was it choice. was from the sixties. You know, like they, they nailed it. <laughs> I guess that's true. That's true. Were were men walking around with low ponytails in the nineties, though? I don't know. I was an infant. Same. Um, I well, do I know. Remember. I I've never read the book. Um, I have it. But it's so large. <laughs> it's very like daunting to want to open that up and give it a give it a go. Um, but I do know that Bill in the book is 
a redhead and he's balding. So I think the choice to have him have a flowing ponytail is really funny, actually. That's the exact opposite. Yeah. Yeah. A balding ginger to long blonde hair. <laughs> Gorgeous ponytail. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Richard Thomas, who mm-hmm. plays Bill. The older looks- Bill. Older Bill yeah. looks exactly. You're gonna fight me on this, like Nicholas Holt. No. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, let me Google this. Richard Thomas. It. Yeah. No. Tell me. Tell me that that. Doesn't it does not look like Nicholas Holt. It looks like Nicholas Holt if Nicholas Holt was in hair and makeup for four hours and was playing Jeffrey Dahmer. That's what that looks like. No. Yeah. He, he really does look like... I mean, come on. Yeah. That one. No, I think they just have blue eyes. I had the ponytail. Yeah, that ponytail's a choice. It is a choice. It's, yeah. You know what, though? Harry Anderson, who plays the older Richie, Richie Tozier. To- to- uh-huh. Tozier? Yeah. Uh, he doesn't look like anyone famous, but he does look exactly like my mom's boyfriend. <laughs> I couldn't Wait. stop thinking about it the entire time. I'm like, I have, I have to reach out to him and be like, has anyone ever told you this? Like, <laughs> you look like him. Wait, like who? The older Harry Richie. Anderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The older Richie. The stash and oh everything. God, that's too fucking funny. <laughs> Wait, so that's Seth Green. Well, no, but, but like, yes, <laughs> yes. It's who Seth Green's character grows into, yes. Okay, well, now you need to ask your mom's boyfriend for pictures of him at 12 years old and see if he looks like Seth Green. See, I don't think that they really, like, looked that similar. Like, I feel like the casting was believable that they could grow up into these people. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I don't look at, like, young Seth Green and think that he looks like the older. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, I feel yeah. like they don't really look that much alike. Okay. Um, I wrote exactly the opposite. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I okay. said, yeah, I literally wrote down, like, they did an excellent job casting this. One, for yeah. the talent. And two, because, like, they genuinely look like their younger counterparts or their okay. older counterparts. Yeah, I feel like they're, like, passable. But I didn't, I didn't feel like they were, like, spot. But also, I feel like I am kind of, like... It's hard not to compare it to the to the remake. Yeah. And like when I tell I mean, you the I remake know. is so fucking spot on with the adult casting, it's it's is crazy. It? It's crazy. Yeah. Wait, I want to see. I want to see. Um And just honestly like the yeah, like them acting like each other was very very similar as well, so. <laughs> but yeah, no. I I think that like it's definitely believable that that they grew up into these older characters for sure. Not okay, I'm, I'm looking at cast. I'm looking at the cast. Oh, okay. Of the new one, yeah. Just to see if it, it feels any better than this one. Mm-hmm. Beverly is spot fucking on. Yep. <laughs> Richie's close. Not, I mean, they have completely different face shapes, but whatever. You have to see like them acting in it though too. Like those Okay. No, they did great. <laughs> how how close of a of a remake is it? Like is it pretty I mean it's two ep- it's two parts. Yeah. It's it and it's it chapter two. Mm-hmm. Is it pretty close to the original? Um Yeah, I feel like there's things here and there that are different, um, for sure. And also the so the remake the first part is when they're kids and then the second part's when they're adults. So it's oh they didn't actually linear. cast the adults until after the first one came out. So oh. yeah, it's it's 
more in time. Um, Chronological. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, it's different, but it's still like the same core story, I think, I guess. Okay. But yeah, there's definitely some changes. Some more like the book, some not as much like the book, from what I've heard. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um Yeah, I mean that yeah. I thought the casting was great. It you're you're <laughs> right though. Just looking at the cast of the new it. It's really good. It's not as good. This That's really, really good. spot on. <laughs> yeah. Especially like the pictures. We'll have to link the article you were looking at, but like even like the pictures in there aren't even like of the adults aren't on set. So even like the like yeah. the choices of makeup and hair and stuff like that even fit them even better. So <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um, it's good. Tim Curry was popping his whole pussy in this. Like, yeah, he was. He's so good in it. And it's crazy that he only has, like, he has less than 20 minutes of screen time in the whole three hours. He's like barely in it. Yeah. He's so good in it. <laughs> I. Oh, yep. no? You don't think he was good well, at it? I think Tim Curry can do no wrong. Yeah. Well. He's, a, <laughs> he's a fucking national treasure and a blessing. What do you mean, Will? Well, what just, do you mean? No, no, no. Just don't put celebrities on pedestals. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, okay. You're right. Um, we, don't as far want, as it, we don't want a sound clip of Tim Curry can do no wrong to go viral in 10 years because he disappoints us. Well, He'll be dead yeah, in 10 he's years. Old. He's pretty old, yeah. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, and maybe knock on wood, but yeah, 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 knock on yeah he's not doing so great. Um, but no, any role that he's ever been in knocked it out of the park. Um, yeah. and I was worried that I would just see Nigel Thornberry throughout yeah. this entire movie. I did. You did? You I did because really did. he wanted to. He does not sound anything like Nigel Thornberry. No, this. he does not. He doesn't sound like Nigel Thornberry. That's just all I could imagine. Yeah, that was but, your own issues. I yeah, think. that was that's that's my fault. But like, clowns don't do it for me. I don't think that you can make a clown scary. I don't think that this okay. was scary. Oh, I yeah. don't think that. I don't even think it was creepy. I think it was still kind of comical. Yeah. I think it's, well, it's not meant to, but also I think a, a lot of the choices were kind of comical. I'm sorry. There was, I was busting out laughing when they go into the sewers as adults and like Bill thinks he hears Audra or he finds her purse or whatever. And he just runs down the tunnel and he's like, Audra! <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes it's so long yes. i was laughing so hard but i think like choices like that that were kind of dated and a little bit cheesy yeah they kind of made it not as serious maybe that's what it is maybe it, it just felt cheesy i think is yeah like pennywise as a concept felt yeah cheesy to that's me fair. i don't know i mean eventually we will watch the the remake which i feel is not as cheesy <laughs> and you can kind of compare if if you think clowns can be scary okay i want to fuck bill skarsgård as pennywise so like god clearly i don't think they're scary <laughs> i won't say what i was gonna say but oh, okay you want to fuck tim curry as pennywise kind of i wouldn't say yeah. no uh <laughs> but fun fact tim curry does think clowns are scary he has chlorophobia oh. <laughs> my god poor tim curry he literally has a phobia of clowns and he had it written in his contract that there couldn't be any reflective surfaces when he was in hair and makeup like near him and hair and makeup took a really long time it took a while and they actually cut down the time that it would take because he he didn't want to sign on at first because of how long it would take and so they like oh. really simplified the makeup because they wanted him to, to do it. But he, I mean, yeah, he was still in the in the chair hours before anyone else had to be on set. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. All for 20 minutes of screen time. I know. 
Well, originally they wanted him to play like all the different forms that Pennywise takes on. So like the werewolf and the spider and like all of that, they wanted him to like still be inside that hair and makeup. Yeah. But then they were like, that's going to take way too long. <laughs> Let's just get other people in here who can. <laughs> oh, do it yeah. Because they'd have to strike it and restart. And exactly. That makes yeah. sense. They could just do everybody at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I will say it didn't feel quite like there was enough explanation at first when suddenly there's a fucking werewolf. Yeah. Like I, there was just, there was too much clown mm-hmm. and not enough. Manifesting as fears. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like that's. I was gonna say bogger, but. Oh. Uh, yeah, it just it like it. Does the new one do that? Is it much more playing on each individual's fear? Um. Yeah, there's definitely like key scenes where Pennywise is kind of tormenting them with their fears. Um. Yeah, I feel like there is. Yeah. I just wish they but, had leaned into that a little more. Yeah. I mean, it definitely doesn't, like, lean into that fully in the in the remakes. It is still, you know, yeah, kind of about him as a clown. But, but yeah, the werewolf kind of comes out of nowhere if you don't know that Pennywise takes off their forms. Which, which you don't, do you? At that point, you don't know that. Mm. Well, Richie wasn't first, right? No. Now I'm trying to remember because it shows like Ben's dad, right? That it like takes the form of Ben's dad, and then oh it shows yeah, him and like so I think like there's moments like that. They just kind of like allude but, to it, right? Where it's like okay, yeah, it can shape shift into other things. Yeah, but. Yeah, Seth Green plays Richie, and he's afraid of werewolves in the movie. That's where this whole thing comes from. Which is cute, because years later, <laughs> you know I'm going to find a way to bring in Buffy. Oh, I thought you were going to say skins. <laughs> no. He, Buffy makes more sense. Yeah, he was a recurring cast member on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and he played a werewolf. <laughs> Aw, cute. Yeah, so... He's a he's a scream king. <laughs> yeah, Seth Green's been in like quite a few horror movies. Yeah, he, I feel like he does horror and comedy. Yeah, no in between. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. It's because they go so well together. <laughs> they, yep. Stop! I've changed your mind on this by now, haven't I? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, good. We really have. <laughs> it only took me thirty episodes, but we got there. <laughs> yeah, thirty-eight to yeah. be exact. <laughs> Um, you know what I wanted out of this movie? I'll tell you exactly what I want. I would love to hear what you or you wanted this this mini series. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted a show, a full blown oh two season, three season, mm. even just one season show where each episode focuses on one of the kids. Okay, kind of like like Yellow Jackets. Or Lost. Mm. Yellow Jackets and Lost both do that, where it's like, maybe it's not Yellow Jackets. What's the one with Melanie Linsky? Yellow Jackets. Is it Yellow? Okay, yeah, <laughs> Yellow Jackets. Where, where each episode is very much about, like, everything that's going on, but there's, like, backstory of one person. A main focus of the episode. Yeah, yeah. That would have been the perfect, like, execution of the movie i would have like felt more connected to the characters because i still having watched this once and done a bunch of research like i still like would not be able to tell you each kid's name oh okay like ben and mike i've got i could tell you audra's name just because he runs down the hallway screaming it for a long time (laughs) he does but like i just i don't feel connected to the characters okay and that would have made a lot more sense, especially with, I mean, you've got that tome of so- source material, mm-hmm. huge book. 
there's got to be more about each of the kids. Yeah, I I mean, I know originally when they decided to make this into a, a miniseries, it was supposed to be like eight to ten hours long. So like yeah. more episodes longer. Um, yeah, I, don't, I think changes happen, you know, it, it gets picked up, it gets dropped, it gets all that kind of stuff. So it ended up yeah. being three hours. Um, I mean, they certainly had the budget for it. Yeah. They had a $12 million budget, which is twice the budget of TV that came out in that time. Yeah, it was a huge budget. Um, I mean, just to film and produce the the ending shoot with the spider cost like $200,000. And they hated it. They hated the spider. Who hated the spider? Everyone hated the spider. Oh. Tommy Lee Wallace, who was the writer and director, uh, was really disappointed when it was done. And then once it was on set, various actors call- called the spider a diva, an Alaskan king crab, a Muppet from hell. <laughs> and then Stephen King himself said <laughs> that it was sh- three Chevy headlights on the bottom of a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Oh, so I don't think anybody God. was like super happy with it. <laughs> you want to know something fucking wild? Yes. The spider reminds me of the thing. Okay. Yeah. And nobody fucking batted an eyelash at how bad thing looked. Well, and they have the audacity to say that this looks awful. <laughs> well, in. It's defense, I guess. The thing w- did not do well when it came out. I guess that's fair. So maybe people did. They just had other criticisms of it at the time, and they weren't going to talk about um that. But yeah, yeah. Also, it's funny you mentioned the thing. Because, I don't know if you recognize him, he didn't have a full beard in this, but Richard Masser, Richard Masser, he plays the older version of Stanley. Granted, he's in like three scenes, but he also played the dog handler Clark in The Thing. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) that's kind of funny. I know. And then we also have Emily Perkins, too, who we know from Ginger Snaps. So young Beverly. Oh, I plays... knew she looked familiar. Yes, that's Bridget, Ginger's sister. In did you see the puzzle pieces I click did. in my brain? Yeah, that was fun to watch that all come yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she looked familiar. Oh my mm-hmm. god! Wait, so she was in this first? Yes. Wild. I know. We've been, we're starting to make you know horror connections. It's going... Yeah, it's like a little community. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Oh, that makes me like it so much more. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I like Emily Perkins. I think she's really underrated. And, like, she is kind of a screen queen. Like, she's been in, like, quite a few things. And I don't know. I enjoy her. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Yeah. She was great in this. All the kids were really great in this. I think that they, like, collectively won some sort of award, too, for, like, childhood casting or childhood acting or something. I think so, yeah. I, I feel like... Yeah, yeah, the, ki- the kids did great, and I feel like this almost. It, it, it's funny that like this and the remakes have like almost the same issue, which is that like the first part is much better than the second part. I guess in my opinion, I'll say that I feel like that's pretty. Most people agree with that, <laughs> but okay. yeah, it's like the. The kids are just so much more compelling to watch. Like once it get, it kind of drags near the end, it kind of fizzles out a bit, and it's not as much fun to like watch the adults take down Pennywise as it is to watch the kids. Yeah. Um. And I feel like I felt that in this, and I I felt that again in the remake too. Yeah, because it, it sounds like the remake does exactly the opposite of what I wanted, where it splits the timelines, and it's kid focused and it's adult focused. Yeah. Whereas I feel like it would be 
much more compelling to intertwine all the stories, but focus on one person at a time. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Nobody asked me. It's crazy they didn't consult you on this. Seriously. Yeah. You know who the real victims are? Who? The taxi drivers. What? Where are you going? What airline? Oh, I'm trying to get to Maine. Beverly, what? What? (laughs) Who says that to a taxi driver? This man's just trying to do his job. And then Bill, oh, wait a minute, takes his fucking wife on a bike ride down the street and the taxi driver just has to sit there and wait? Oh, you know. Oh, if it was an Uber driver, two minute counter and he's gone. (laughs) Yeah, I think I think you're you're a little uh what's the word I'm looking for? Passionate about taxi drivers. Spoiled. Oh spoiled by (laughs) by Uber and like the Uber and Lyft experience because those are two things that taxi drivers do. I'm spoiled because I want to respect the taxi drivers. Oh no, that those are two things that taxis are designed to do. Take you to where you no, like know where you're going. Yeah. And flag drop. But know where you're going as in like you tell them where you're going. Not they're not supposed to figure out which airline you're taking. That's not okay, the taxi well, driver's job, Katie. <laughs> yeah. The nineties is a different time. Clearly. And there was only like five airlines. <laughs> and she didn't have a ticket yet. How is she supposed to know? Well, this is all on her, not on the taxi driver. So <laughs> Well, also, there's there's like a flag drop option in taxis where you pay for them to sit there and wait for you while you go inside and do something. Well, he better have paid. I'm sure he did. Bill, you better have fucking paid that man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a hill to die on. Yeah, I don't know why all of a sudden I got very passionate about that, but I remember... The first taxi scene, I was like, okay, Beverly, that's not appropriate. And then the second one happened, and I was like, come on, (laughs) give these guys a break. Yeah. Well. Do you have a hill you'd like to die on today? (laughs) No. You know what? It's not even about me dying on a hill. It's like, I'm not prepared to die on the hill, but I am prepared to kill you on it. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. You're prepared to kill on a hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll die on any hill, though. I love to argue. We know. <laughs> can't argue with you there, unfortunately. Yeah. You can't. It's my brand. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yawning and arguing. <laughs> so it makes yeah. Me. Yeah. Well, how scary did you think it was? One. <laughs> Yeah, it was not scary at all. There was nothing scary about it. I could imagine that the newer ones are much scarier. Um, because of like the, the source material like that. That's a scary concept. Yeah, not the clown, but like. You know, your own fears. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you say? I give it a one as well. Um, okay. It's that thing, like, I know older movies are probably scary when they come out, right? Um, Because it's, like, that's where effects and, like, stuff is at that time. So it's probably, okay. like, your first time seeing a spider monster like that, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> right? Um, okay. But the scares just don't really age well, in my opinion. Like, ever. I don't, I yeah. don't find really any older movies that scary. Um, and who knows, maybe, you know, 30 years from now, someone will look at movies that I think are creepy and they're like, those effects are trash. <laughs> so yeah, who knows? That could happen and that's fair. But yeah, no, I, d- I don't find this very scary. It was also made for TV. So like, they couldn't really go balls to the wall. It couldn't be that scary. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm trying to remember, like, when we came into this experiment. Mm-hmm. Did I ever say how I felt about like 
creature features, monsters, and whether or not I thought that was scary? I don't think so. I think we've just, as we've gone on, I've discovered that, like, supernatural is more what scares you. Yeah. Because I can't think of a creature being, like, scaring me. Yeah. Because it's just so, like... That's never going to happen. <laughs> I Whereas think, a ghost. I think we did have this conversation. Okay. This is yeah. actually like bringing back memories of, I, I don't know if it was Ginger Snaps or, or Midnight Mass, because those were two of the like early creature features that we did. Well, and Thing. Yeah, the Thing was after them. And the Thing's like aliens. So that could happen. Aliens but, are definitely real. The government confirmed it this year, so... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, so did the Mexican government. Yeah. Do you remember like, oh my God, it was like years and years and years ago, probably like 10 or 15 years ago. And um, the Russian government was like, oh, America, like you need to tell people about the aliens. And everybody was like, oh, okay, you know, calm down. And then like months later, like one of the Canadian officials was like, no, you need to tell people about the aliens. <laughs> and then everybody was kind of like, well, Canada, so maybe. <laughs> but then nobody ever talked about it again until like 2020 when casually during the pandemic, the government was like, yeah, no, UFOs are real. And then <laughs> nobody talked about it again because everything else was happening. And then now again, they're like, yeah, no, we've been saying. <laughs> I mean, so to be clear, ma- <laughs> Sorry, now we're ma- going on a whole nother tangent. Yeah, though. we're talking about aliens now. <laughs> Fuck you, it. Um... To be clear, mathematically, there has to be aliens. Oh, statistically, it's impossible for us to be alone in the universe. Seriously, it's so fucking large. Yeah. There's aliens. It's unfathomably Seriously. huge. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Believe in aliens. Will we ever see them? Also, statistically, probably impossible. Probably not. Yeah. But who's to say? Um, Let me. Anyways, creature features. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did talk about this because we did say, like, I think we can pretty much say for a fact that there are not werewolves or vampires or, like, anything like that in this world, so. Yeah. Sorry. It's not that yeah, scary. I just can't imagine a creature. Quiet place. Aliens. Those guys are kind of creepy. Aliens. That's aliens, too. Hey, you, do you know what an alien is? No. <laughs> but but it's still a creature. You know? True. But I think of, like, I guess I separate, like, aliens versus creature features. Because, like, creature features are more about, like, fantasy creatures that exist on the planet that we're on. Whereas, like, okay, alien movies are more like, it came from outer space, right? Yeah. I think it all just goes back to, like, personifying slash embodying the villain doesn't do it for me. All right. That's fair. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I feel like there's something else I was going to say. Oh. Lost it. I'm sorry. How sexy did you think it was? Yeah, no. One. Okay. Not even Tim Curry could do it for you. <laughs> well. No. Oh, okay. To, I mean, I, I'd like to clarify that I would still have sex with him as Penny. Okay. But there were a lot of children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about them. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It just didn't have sexy vibes. Okay, that's fair. What did you say? I gave it a one. I think Tim oh, Curry as Pennywise is fantastic, but he's not the hot one. Sorry. Bill? Oh, Bill Skarsgård. <laughs> Who the fuck did you think I was talking about? There's a Bill in this movie. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Ponytail right. God. Jesus. <laughs> no, no, Bill Skarsgård. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. not the Ponytail. 
That's the real the nightmare. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, between, uh, if I had to pick one of the actors Mm -hmm. between Tim Curry and Bill Skarsgård, I would also pick Bill Skarsgård. He's a very attractive man. But Tim Curry is just elite. Oh, yeah. He's fantastic. Yeah. He really is. Great actor. Doesn't miss. See that TikTok going around of him in a video game where it's like, I'm going to escape to the one place not corrupted by capitalism. Space! (laughs) Space! Yes. And he can't keep a straight face because it's fucking stupid what he's saying. I love how you ask, have you seen it? You've sent it to me twice. Like two different versions of it. (laughs) So many times. And I'll keep sending it to you every time that hits my FYP. Spice. <laughs> Spice. And he's laughing. He literally can't control his laughter because stupid. he said that it's so, yeah, he was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever said. And they took like a hundred takes and that was the best one. And you can still tell he's about to die of laughter. Yeah. That's life. <laughs> yep. How fucked up did you think it was? I was just going to ask. Oh, well, you didn't, so. I, I did. Um, fucked up. One and a half. Okay. For, like, the concept of your own fears. Um, and it makes okay. so much fucking sense that where I thought that, that I that idea originated is not where that idea originated. Um, we don't need to talk about it, but. Uh, it makes so much sense that that came from somewhere else, and this is where that originates. I think is this where that originates? Um, not necessarily. Oh, okay. Um, the only other example I can think of, I I think would be the '80s, because Nightmare on Elm Street. I think Freddy Krueger kind of does that as well. Um, Ooh, okay. A little bit. So, when was this book written? When was it written? That's true. I guess the book was written. Oh, I don't know. It. Let's see, let's well, see. We're researching. We're researching on the fly. 1986. 86? 1986. And Nightmare on Elm Street was before 84. that. 84. Yeah. Wes Craven. Wes Craven. I know him. <laughs> As you should. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um oh so yeah. he's so old now. Look at how old he looks. Oh, uh, he's dead. I don't know if it oh, okay. Sorry. Rest in peace for escape. <laughs> Big fan. Um yeah, I don't know if uh there, there probably were movies that did it before then. Um but I that's the example I can think of. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that that's a very fucked up concept yeah of an entity being able to capitalize on your worst fears agreed what would what would it turn into for you like a like a bug but like a little bug not too little but like medium sized wild <laughs> I know Just it doesn't one? make any sense. Well, probably a lot of them. Yeah. I don't really like bugs. But I don't like the bigger the bug gets, weirdly, the less I'm kind of scared of it. Like tarantulas don't bother me. But like you give yeah. me like a little house spider, get that fucker away from me, right? Like I don't want to see it. But a tarantula is kind of cute, right? Like it's big. I know where it's at. If it gets on me, I'm aware of it being on me. Yeah. I don't like the idea that, like, a little spider could, like, be on me for a little bit, and I don't know about it. Okay, that's fair. That feels violating to me, and I don't appreciate it. Fair. Thank you. Everybody always thinks I'm weird for saying that. No, no, I, I think that's totally fair. Yeah. That, yeah. Um. <laughs> what would it be for you? 
I think my husband's family. Oh, well, do you need me to cut this out? <laughs> <laughs> They're not listening to this. I hope they do listen to this. <laughs> Repent. Not the in-laws. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> All right. Uh, there. Yeah. Um. Anyway, what's 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 after that one? Well, I'll, I didn't, I'll think of it. I didn't go. You didn't answer yet. But if you want to, ki- we can skip my answer. If you want. No, no, no. We should. I mean, we've done it. We should probably. Um. What question? I for well, don't. No, we're good. Uh, right. How fucked up did you think it was? Thank you for asking, Katie. Um, You're welcome. I gave it a one. Oh. I just yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think anything like too crazy happened. Um. But yeah, it was made for TV, so it wasn't like super insane. I think you keep using that excuse, though. I think what? that's an excuse. What? That it was made for TV. I mean, there's some scary fucking okay. shit on TV now. That's a good point. But I feel like back in the 90s, there really wasn't. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Maybe like the fortune cookie scene. Like break it open. And there's like bugs was- and like the. That was a big bug though. That was a big bug. Like. That was a big yeah, bug. Yeah, it was a pretty big bug. So you shouldn't bother you. A little like bird. That was. Do you remember that bird? It was like a bird in one, like a not like a fully formed bird. It was like a, yeah. It's crazy. Did you watch the movie? (laughs) Yeah, but uh, the only bird I can think of right now is I just watched the first episode of American Horror Story: Delicate. Oh, and a like a bird, a, a like not fully formed bird. Is like kind of a recurring theme throughout the first episode. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, one of the fortune cookies has like a little bird. I remember the bug. Yes. I remember the blood. Okay. Well, watch it again. <laughs> All right, I'll watch it again. <laughs> What's next? Overall? Right. <laughs> Overall. I gave it a 2.5. Oh. Um, I do think it's a classic. I respect it. I think it's kind of fun, but it is a little silly, goofy, cheesy. Definitely a lot of choices from the 90s that were there. And I think some, some horror fans might find it a fault in me. <laughs> I feel like I typically kind of like the like newer remake fresher versions better that's the second time you've said that recently i know and i'm sorry horror fans i think you are i'm not really (laughs) yeah (laughs) stop gatekeeping stop making me feel bad because i don't like the classics as much okay so pretentious (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everybody like what you like. Um, (laughs) What did you give it? I gave it a three. Hey, okay, let's go. (laughs) Yeah, I would have given it a 2.5. Oh, but it made me genuinely excited to watch the remakes. Yeah, (laughs) which I think is worth something like it it just makes me want to watch more of the lore. Yeah, like just the the, I've said this a a bunch of times, but like the concept of like playing off of your own fears and everybody sees something different or everybody like experiences something different, I think can get really fucking scary and creepy. So I'm excited to watch more of them. Yeah. I'm excited for you to watch more. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. So it gets a little bump. Yeah. I like it. All right. Would you survive? Yeah. I didn't really think about it. Oh, okay. But I, I think so. Yeah. Not not a whole lot of people die. Um, I too am an okay shot with a slingshot. Great. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I, I too have a great group of friends. Yeah. Yeah. To like, you know, help you out. Protect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm not, I'm not really worried about it. I don't think I'm dying. I like it. Yeah. Uh, how about you? Yeah. yeah. There's not even a lot of deaths. That's what I said. And honestly, like, I get that they made a promise and they feel this, you know, responsibility to go back and make sure that it's dead. Um, but, like, they didn't have to. They could have just not gone back. Well, one of them did. Yeah, that's another thing. And I don't know if they explain it more in the book or not of like why Stanley took his life. But like I don't I mean, why just not, don't go, babe. I think that's what's that's what to me what is so fucking creepy about yeah. the whole concept is like what would you rather do? then face your worst fear. Stay home. What, like, what? Well, who's to, <laughs> who is to say, to do <laughs> who is to say that Pennywise slash it wasn't, like, just in dairy? Because I think they kind of explain that that's why when you leave dairy... Like, they kind of forgot. You forget. Yeah, because, okay. like, his control is in Derry. Or her. I think in the book, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't read it, but I think in the book, one of the reasons Stan is so scared is because he discovers that it is actually female, and it, like, had laid a bunch of eggs. So oh that my was, God. Like, yeah, so that's, like, a whole thing. There's a lot in the book that is cut out. Like, it's, there's, like, a turtle. Like, if you don't understand. A turtle? There's a turtle who's the creator of the universe and its natural what? enemy. It's its natural enemy. It's, like, a, it's called the turtle. And, yeah, that's a whole big part of the ending. And I guess, uh, I can't remember who it was. Um, but some, one of the actors, I think it was John Ritter, asked, uh, he played older Ben, like, asked when he got to set, like, oh, like, Where's the turtle? And everybody was like, are you insane? We're not putting that in there. <laughs> so, yeah. There's a lot. There's How also a scene that's, book? like, infamously cut out that's, like, not... I'm very happy that everybody cut it out because it's never been a live thing. But, yeah, there, there's also when they're kids, uh, they all have sex in the tunnels. Excuse me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the children? The children, Beverly has sex with all of them. I don't know what's wrong with Stephen King. I don't know. That's as, a wild as, thing to put in the book. As as children, but not for real. It's like a a or a piece of like horror element. No, it's an orgy. They get lost in the tunnels, and to find their way out, Beverly has sex with all of them. What? Yeah. Very thankful to everybody who's cut that out, which is everybody who's ever made a live action version of this. Because that's a crazy thing to do. That is so fucked. Yeah. It's 1150 pages. It's a long fucking book. I just can't believe that, that... I mean, to to only make 188 minutes when you have all of this? But I th- I don't think, and I think even, oh, who was? Someone talked about this when they were making this into a script as well. Stephen King's very good with, like, words and writing, but, like, that doesn't translate well to the screen. I don't think that the turtle would have done well. I think that it would have been really stupid to see it on screen. Okay. Like, I feel like some of his concepts are better left to the book. And then when you try to actually, like, 
visually create it. It's better as a concept, you know? Okay. That's how I feel, at least. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Yeah. Well, what's next week? <laughs> next week? Um, it's A Tale of Two Sisters. Oh. I was supposed to watch this a long time ago. Yeah, we watched it in the Discord, but you weren't there, so. Is it a, I think it's a, it's like a Asian foreign film. Yes, it is Korean. Okay. South Korean. Korean, South Korean film, and there, it's about two brothers. Just kidding. It's about two sisters <laughs> <laughs> who uh, I don't know. Um, one of them's possessed. Okay. They're twins. Yeah. They're twins. So they look identical. One of them yes. is possessed. And the parents realize this. But they're not sure which one is possessed. Oh my god. Yeah. It's really hard for them. And uh there's a scene where they go into a house together. And they're trying to get the entity out of the one sister's body. Okay. Like a little but the audience yeah, like they think that they know how to do it. Right. They go in. They go into the house. And they're looking around, and um, uh, you you lose sight of them briefly. Oh my! Can't God. see them anymore. So now we don't know. We don't know which one. And in order to get the entity out, you have to stab the person. And so the entity stabs the person, the, the, I mean, no, we don't know. Is it the entity? We don't know. We don't know. One of the sisters stabs the other sister. And we, as the audience are like, oh, thank God it's over. But is it? Is it? And that's the end of the movie. Wow. What a great film we're about to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Am I close? Not really. No. <laughs> Is it I about like two it. sisters? No, it's actually about two brothers. You're joking. I am. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it is about two sisters. I got it that is, part Yes, you nailed it. It's crazy uh, idea that A Tale of Two Sisters is about two sisters, but it is about two sisters. Are they possessed? Is this a possession? Um, I know you Entity. hate it when I do this, but I really genuinely think that you should go into this not knowing anything. It's just trust me, please, for once, don't don't Whatever. Wikipedia it. <laughs> I don't Wikipedia it. You're you a keep, liar and a fraud. <laughs> you keep perpetrating this falsity about me. I don't read before I watch. I read while I watch. Okay, don't read ahead just let it happen enjoy the ride okay i will check the trigger warnings and as long as there are no triggers that will make me vomit i will not read ahead i don't think there's any no you know what i always say that but i don't actually know because i don't it doesn't bother me so then like bone noises bother me yeah and seeing that yeah 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 um, I don't know. Let me look it up right now. No one breaks a bone. Oh, good. Yeah. Now you don't even have to look it up. Yeah, because sometimes there are some spoilers yeah, in the spoilers in the does the, the dog, dog die? die yeah. Yeah. yeah but, no breaking of bones. I knew it wasn't like body horror or anything like that. But I didn't think so, but I couldn't remember if there was like an offhanded, you know. Excited. It'll be good. Me too. You've seen it, so you don't get to guess, right? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Bye.
Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. If there are any movies you'd like to hear us talk about or you'd like to traumatize me with, please let us know in the comments or shoot us a DM on our socials at Killer Cuties Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Next week, we're going to be talking about the 2003 South Korean psychological horror, A Tale of Two Sisters. We hope to see you then. Bye.